Alrighty, welcome back. I am going to try a design by Zarin Art. I will link her YouTube channel below. I'm using Cast and Craft, Octopus Alcohol Ink Fuchsia, Octopus Ink Bloody Mary, and some Gold Crushed Glass. And this is going to be a two-part double layer 3D bloom that I'm going to attempt. So I will mix my resin and be right back. Alrighty, so my resin has mixed, is mixed. It's the Nick Pro one-to-one. -one. I'm going to pour a layer here. And while that's spreading, I'm going to put in another cup about, oh, I don't need that much, so I'm going to put about 15 grams aside for where I'm going to put my casting craft for my peddling. So I'm just going to measure out into this other cup. I'm going to do 20 because I'm familiar with that amount and then I'll see oh that might just be enough um, did I do holding at the right edge yeah if not I'll take some out from my other cup where I have that I'm going to put my um, white in so just scrape out as much as I can on this. I am now just going to gently nudge. Now, I'm the only thing I'm concerned about is that this is a shallow mold, and this is a double, a double 3D. So I hope it's got some depth enough for me to pour another layer. So I don't want to over fill this first one, but I also need enough to do my bloom. So it's a conundrum. But we shall see. Whoopsie boopsie. What I might do is just take out a little bit. Well, I'm just gonna keep scraping, see how much I can get out of this. My lighting's really bad, hard to see, so. It's supposed to self-level, so I think what I'm more concerned about is the center because I'm just going to do a bloom in the center for my first layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out, um, well, let's see, just a little bit here, just to give it a little height there. Then I'm going to drop in My center, I'm going to stand on my tippy toe to see where the center is. Okay. Now, obviously, it's um, sticking up, but that's okay because I'm going to be petaling around it. So, as I said, this is a shallow mold. So, I'm seeing if it'll work. Zarin Art, uh, I, I, I've got to see her name. She does amazing pieces and I have no idea where she gets her molds. They're just gorgeous. Um, so I'm just making do with similar shape of what she's used. I'm just gonna sort of fuss with this center a little bit, poke it in. And I'm not too concerned as I said because I'm be this is a double layer one. Okay, 
So then I will torch real quick. I'm going to drop in my fuchsia first. And I'm going to put in my Bloody Mary. Spread as it spreads, put back in the fuchsia. I kind of want a, a fairly good size. So, and two more there. Put one out here. So to make it go out a bit. Trying to shape it. I want a, a little bit more, so I'm going to just do it right there and there. Let's see, because I'm going to do like this, and then I need to do that, so actually can I, I can go a little bit bigger. I'm going to put my fuchsia here, and here, here, and here. Yep. And I think I will stop. Let's see. Yep, I'm going to stop there. I'll mix my white. So while I while that resin is doing its thing, I can mix up my white, which is the casting craft. And what this does is the timing of it lets the alcohol ink sort of spread. And then when I place my petals, it won't distort the petals because if you put your white immediately after you've put in your alcohol inks, your petals or your shape of your flower might get distorted. And this is something I learned from Julie from pouring your heart out. So excuse the noise that this is going to make in a moment. Which is the white resin in my piping bag. I could freehand the petaling of the flowers, but I don't feel very confident, so. now because my white feels thick. Those are pretty colors together, I think. Fuchsia and Bloody Mary. Even though it's called Bloody Mary, it's not very Bloody Mary. So, <clears throat> I always sort of, when I use that, I like to use it, the Bloody Mary, I always like to use it with another color. So I'm just getting my piping bag ready. A little uh, tip off the edge. Now I'm ready to it's funny whenever I do this I hold my breath. It's really funny habit. So I'm just going to sort of complete where it ends the ink and then I'm just going to do one layer outside. And that's all. 
Oh, maybe I better complete that since I have a little dot there. So I feel like I need to go back in on some of these uh, just to give it a little. Now that's going to cause blobs. I just know it, but I want to make it thicker. Oops, kind of went in too far. Hmm, trying to think whether I should go over the other ones or not. I think I'll just lightly and slowly go over them. It's funny, it looked like I was petaling deep or wide but it didn't look like it. It's going to be a blob there, sugar. my tool to just kind of help these come in a bit and maybe hopefully not blob too badly. It's already starting to bloom out there so that's a good sign. Okay so I'm going to leave that. Wow really needed very little of that. Torch. I might take another glimpse after I clean up my tools to see what progress this might be having, or I will see you for the next step. Okay, so that first layer has somewhat cured, and I am now going to be using Alcohol Inks Berry Juice Caramel 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 an ocean from Octopus and Cast and Craft. So I've mixed my Nick Pro one-to-one. -one. I'm going to pour a thin layer, but you know, thick enough. And while that does that, I'm gonna put aside some for my Cast and Craft, for my white. So as that is settling, I will go measure 20 grams or so. My resin is nice and toasty warm. Um, as I mentioned, it's the Nick Pro one to one. And I'm gonna put aside 20 grams for my second coat or second layer of resin. Sorry, I have to concentrate here. So I wanna make sure I have enough, but not too much, cause I, do, I am going to be putting a layer of the petals. So let me just see how I do on pushing. I guess resin is supposed to be self-leveling. Um, which I assume, I wonder if I didn't do this, if it would go to the edge. Um, I'm just not knowledgeable enough. I'm really excited and anxious to see how that inner petals turned out. It's looking good. Okay, so I think I have enough, which is kind of cool. That means I made enough resin. I am going to just put just a little bit more because I think I have the room for it in my mold. This mold again was a gift um, from one of my cousins. I think they ordered it from Etsy. And this is, I'm calling it a double layer 3D bloom. So anyway, uh, I'm going to slightly torture. I 
I wish I could do the smooth torching that I see folks do, but I'm just not confident enough to do that. So my first color is the berry juice. And I will place it sort of around my center. And work my way in again. Leave it open because I'm going to be adding now the oops, ocean. And I'm going to spread it out. So I'm going to put it out here. And it's going to look like a hot mess, which is the intention. And I'm going to put my, let's see, I wonder if I could put another, it's kind of lopsided a bit. Um, oh, well. And I can put the yellow or the car caramel. Okay. Let's see. How can I make this even sort of come out here, maybe like this? Because it is going to, you know, close in. They always do, so. Alright. Interesting looking. Alright, so once I'll let that settle because I learned from Miss Julia pouring your heart out that you always wait till you, one, I'm just counting my drops of my casting craft. All right, now I'm going to mix my casting craft. Ooh, it's nice and warm, toasty warm. And I hope I made enough, we shall see. So stir really well. So what my train of thought, sorry. Um, the lesson I learned is that when you drop in your alcohol inks, let it settle for a while before you do your petaling or your spirals or whichever you're going to do. It, it sort of doesn't distort your petals as much if you let that settle in before you start drawing on top of it. So I'm stirring this really, 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 really well. Now I'm going to put as much of it as I can into my piping bag. I really hope it's okay that I just do what others have done. It's just, I'm just not clever enough or creative enough. I mean, sometimes my creative creativity comes in where I sort of embellish or switch or change something that I've seen. But I hope it's okay that I do what others do. And I'm hoping they're doing it to inspire us. So, all right, excuse the crunching sound. Tie my little knot. One day I'll get brave enough and not tie a knot at the end of my bag. <clears throat> then I'm going to cut about I don't know if you can see that much off the tip. Oh, come on. And now I will con now I will start the peddling.
Boy, my hand's not very steady today. That looked a little thin, so I'm going to make it thicker. Oh, I don't know why I'm always off center. Maybe that just can be my signature. And I'm planning on doing these petals all the way out. Let's get my bag. That's too thin. Maybe if I did this while I was standing on a stool, because look how lopsided it is. Oh my gosh. Oh dear. My nickname in high school was Shortcake. So I am short. Let me adjust my bag again. It's kind of not coming out as I want it to. I think I've, I've got to concentrate on this side. Oh, so uneven. It must be cold that my hands are kind of shaking today. I'm just going to do a few more in. Okay, let's see. Now, now what you do is um, you, I'm going to pull some of this out. Mm, that was too narrow. Should have left some room there. It's just a different trial a way of petaling. Now, what Z uh, Zarin did is she took some of the ink and added it to where she had the spikes coming out. So I'm going to try that. And I'm just doing it randomly just to give those points kind of a color. Now, it's too bad that this mold is so thin because I would sure have loved to have put um, a back coat to it. So when I display the unmolding, I'm going to place a piece of black underneath it. So hopefully it'll feature the blooms, which I'm hoping turn out. Now I know Julie in Pouring Your Heart Out has done one of these where she puts the um, 
ink I think her recent one I can't remember which video where she uh, lined her petals so I'm doing it mine very slightly no rhyme or reason just sort of where I'm getting it from just there's room for one there so I'm just gonna go there and that's it so I don't know if these little bits will do much but we'll see I'm gonna let the video run a little so maybe you can see some of the movement hopefully And that will give me time to let the bubbles hopefully come up, if any, and then I'll torch lightly. And what I do when I do that is I clean up as I go so that I'm not wasting time or using my time. Or actually, it's more because I'm impatient. I don't like to wait. So cleaning helps me wait. Mm -hmm. You can see the petals coming out. I am going to hopefully shape this into a bowl or platter or, you know, so that there's a little lip on the edge. I mean, I know even though it's a narrow depth, you can top coat it, but uh, I I don't want to do that because what I'll, well, we'll see. We'll see. More than likely not top coat it or, you know, put a coat on top because I'm always so afraid of it coming off the sides. But, ooh, I sure like that shape. It's a little different pattern from our normal, traditional blooming. So, this is such an interesting form, resin art. Resin, it just does its own thing. You can't control it. Not that I'm trying to control it. I'm just trying to create things that I see that are so beautiful that folks are doing. All right, so enough jabbering. I am going to torch because as you can see, the pattern is forming. Really hoping, hoping, hoping these petals bloom and this little touch of the little spikes there, or whatever you call it, gives a little effect. So what I learned is that the longer I wait before I do my pipe piping, um, you know, the, the blooms do show up pretty quickly. So, all right, I'm going to cover this and then I will see you for the unmolding. All righty. So it's been a few hours and it looks like it's set and I kind of want it soft and pliable so that I can put it in my bowl right here. And I'm using this black to hopefully show some really cool blooms, I am hoping. And the way I tell is that when I pull pull the um, coast, uh, the mold to its side, if it pops out easy, it's okay. So let us see how this bloom double layer turned out. <gasps> oh, very cool. So those little wispies kind of made a difference. So this is a little off center. I know someone earlier on had mentioned to me, but you know, it's hard to tell. Oh, 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 oh no, oh no. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm gonna place it in here and then I'm just gonna cut around it and it'll have like this black cardboard back. And, um, I'll just carefully cut it. Oh, I didn't think about that, that it's still sticky. <laughs> oh, Callie, Callie, Callie. But 
there you go. So I'm going to let that sit for a while. And then I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and cut. And hopefully this black uh, piece that I've got here um, will, will stick to it. Then it's like a double whammy that I didn't have to put a top coat. So let's hope and I will see you for the end result in a photo. Thank you.